Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Non-Farm Payrolls Friday. And I know we say this pretty much every month that this is the important figure, this is the Non-Farm Payrolls, but given what Janet Yellen has prepared us for, this really is the Non-Farm Payrolls to break the back of the quiet summer that we've had. August has been pretty much in the doldrums, and I think it's reached a... Uh, pennant, if you like, in terms of volatility that we're now ready to move out of, and this non-farm payrolls figure really will provide us with that. So let's just have a look at the expectations. I'll give a full pre preview, obviously, uh, as we get closer to the session, but consensus 175, consensus range 125 to 215. Unemployment rate consensus 4.8, Prior was 4.9, and private payrolls change 179. One thing to look out for, as always, uh, that we highlight is the average hourly earnings. Actually, that was 0.3% last month, rather than it's been averaging around 0.2%. So this is something that the Fed are going to be looking very carefully at, because, look, unemployment has been low. The employment data from the U.S. has been good, consistently good. I'll talk about that in a moment. So... The Fed still haven't hiked, however, even with that consistently good data. So each time this is coming out, more and more attention is being spent on the average hourly earnings percentage. And 0.2% expected again. If that comes out stronger than expected, then again, you can see the market move. And how will the market move? Well, the market's going to move in expectation of a Fed hike in September. Just two weeks ago, Fed hike expectations for September were well below 30%. Uh, now they're touching on 40%. Um, it's looking almost close to 60% for a Fed rate hike expectation in December. And really, for the September Fed hike, it's this number that carries the most weight. Here you can see the trend in non-farm payrolls. Uh, this is uh, the private payrolls number solely. Here looking at 217. Here you've got non-farm payrolls, private and public payrolls. Uh, you can see that just anomaly there coming in, in in May, but June and July incredibly strong, far making up for that anomaly. And 255, anything above 200,000 today will be incredibly impressive. The average, you know, it's even taking into account that dip, if we're going to have a bar above 255 here, then it's all going to look very, very strong for the dollar. Average hourly earnings, this is the, uh, the surprise last month, 0.3%. You can see here we've been hovering really since the start of the year. Apart from, from January, since the start of the year, we've been hovering around the 0 0.2, 0 0.1. So 0.3%, if, if for any reason we beat that 0.3%, then again, we're going to get very, very strong moves. And what's going to happen? Well, first of all, not much is going to happen before this data comes out. Okay, So if you uh, fancy having the morning, walking around the City of London, taking a break, stretching your legs, then by all means do do so. Um, it's very unlikely large positions will be uh, taking place before this data comes out. Let's go through the asset classes on the likelihood on reactions. So first of all, remember there's different components here. Headline at 175, we've got the uh, average hourly earnings at 0.2% and the unemployment rate at 4.8%. As long as the unemployment rate is below 5%, then, then don't worry about it. 4.9 or 4.7, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, two, then, to focus on other headline. If the headline comes out anything above 200,000, then certainly you'd expect the dollar to strengthen. So here, the euro dollar, the pivot, and this one should be tested. We've got this lovely triple quadruple bottom. Can you see this on the euro dollar here? So you can take it from a range, if you like, a band going from 1.1140, 1.1130 in the euro USD. Should we move below there? If I just open up this euro dollar chart slightly, you can see how that's come into play again before. Should we move below there? Well, we're, well, we're going all the way back to last month's non-farm payroll in terms of support. Uh, next up, we've got around the 110 handle, 110.89, and then 110.63 in the euro usd so above 2000 but below 250 and i think you've got pivot s1 and the last week's lows being tested this week's lows being tested certainly in the euro usd above 250,000, so that takes us here 
above 250,000, then you really do start to open up those August lows once this support level of 1.1130 gets broken. So that's above 250,000, along with average hourly earnings being 0.3% or above. So that's in the euro US dollar. Now in T notes, T notes might be a little bit more convoluted for the following reasons. Let's have a look at T-notes first of all, if I put this on to uh, continuation settings. So as the Fed have been, uh, so here's the, the jump on the Brexit vote, obviously, June the 24th. You can see that in T-notes. That move higher, this is prices, not yield, that we're looking at. That move higher has been retraced, nearly in whole. We've beaten out a support level, much like the euro, actually. Here you can see there's a triple bottom in, in T-notes, 131, 12 and a half. Um, that also comes in line with the April and May high. So if we get a number above 200 but below 250, uh, let me just add the pivot levels onto here one second. Above 200 but below 250, certainly that 131.12 uh, area can be tested. That's just looking at yesterday's low, and that would be understandable, certainly. Should we get above 250 and with the average hourly earnings 0.3% or above, then we're really stretching our legs, maybe 131 the handle, before then getting to the pre-Brexit levels of 130, 21 and a half uh, around this level. So that's T-notes. However, the one caveat to this is what I think might happen to equities. And I shared a video with this uh, for you guys yesterday, if you, if you remember. And that was that if this number does come out really strong, you know, let, let's have a look at the S&P, for example. Let's just have a look at the S&P on a, on a longer-term chart. I've got it here on a 30-minute chart. Let's have a look at this on a, on a daily chart. And I'm going to go back to continuation settings. Okay, so look what happened to equities at the beginning of the year. Do you guys remember? This was the worst January for the S&P on record. The Fed hiked in December, and their communique, their forward guidance, was that we're going to get four hikes again in 2016. So the Fed were turning hawkish, and as the Fed turned hawkish, equities, the S&P, I think this was about a 15 to 20% move lower in the S&P, wasn't it, after the Fed rate hike from December going into January. We hit a bottom there, 1,800 exactly. We then hit that low. This is also including you know, the bank selling off. This was Deutsche Bank down 30% or so as well, um, as well as the, the, the Shanghai comp closing two times. And it was from this point, if you remember, January the 29th, the Bank of Japan went into negative rates. So the Central Bank of Japan reacting to this equity market fallout by loosening monetary policy. March the 10th, Mario Draghi then steps forward and puts the ECB into further negative rates and releases his bazooka of buying corporate bonds. Just after Mario Draghi, it was in that same week, wasn't it? Around the 14th of March here. This is when Janet Yellen starts turning incredibly dovish with dovish communique. Scaling back the expectation of only one interest rate hike this year. And these three, so you also actually had the People's Bank of China here with their triple R rate cut. That was towards the beginning of February. Do you guys remember this? So after this equity market fallout, you had the four largest central banks in the world all take action, all take easing action. What was the resulting effect in equity markets? Bang, new all-time highs. We've seen this picture before. We've seen it in 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and now we see it in 2016. So... What I'm trying to say is, should this data, you know, the Fed have now committed to this event. This is what I would call a binary event, this non-farm payrolls figure. It's a binary event. And by that, I mean, if this data comes out above 250,000 Fed rate hike in, in September, if it comes out below 200,000, no Fed hike in September. That's it. It's not too... It's not too complicated. The caveat, just to bear in mind, is the average hourly earnings. That's assuming average hourly earnings is 0.3% and above. So if this comes out higher than 250 and you've got wage growth earnings as well, then the Fed will hike in September. And what we've seen recently in Fed speakers is they will also leave the door open to another hike in December. What impact might that have on the S&P? 
I think overall it's not going to be a good one. Today, you might actually have the S&P react initially positively to much stronger than expected data. You might find the S&P in the first few minutes react strongly to better than expected data. But if it's much better than expected, I think next week you might find the S&P suffer. I don't know whether that will happen today. But what I'm trying to say is on much better than expected data, the S&P might be tricky to trade. The euro dollar will be more clear. T-notes certainly initially will be more clear. So by, by all means, much better than expected data, go short T-notes. But if you see the S&P start to break through the low that we found on the 2nd of August, 2141, if the S&P breaks below that low, clear level of support here, then your short position in the S&P in, in T-notes may not be sustainable because of the flight to quality, therefore. So do bear that in mind. But that really is going to be the main action for today, guys. It's all about the U.S. We've got minor data coming out uh, this morning. Just in 40 minutes' time, we've got construction PMI coming out of the U.K. Actually, not that minor data. After UK, yesterday's fantastic data out of the U.K., um, construction data will be interesting to view. I can't move on, really, without looking at yesterday's data here. So... Fantastic manufacturing data moving us from 0.314, one big candle all the way to 3270. Uh, in terms of a percentage move, therefore, from the low to highest day, that's a 1.5% move in the pound versus the US dollar. The manufacturers saying directly that this was a result and they were impacted most by the uh, fall in sterling. Maybe Brexit is uh, UK's QE via the back door. <laughs> This sort, of, this sort of growth in, in manufacturing is uh, certainly what many economies around the world would like, but perhaps for less precarious reasons, certainly. So we do have GP construction data coming out at 9.30, 10 o'clock, Eurozone PPI, but don't expect too much, guys. Canadian data coming out at the same time as non-farm payrolls. It's all about non-farm payrolls. If you, if you trade this morning, make sure you're out of any trades really by midday. If you're trading this afternoon, well, as always, the only people that trade past 3.30 on non-farm pay, payrolls day are those people trying to make money back. Um, so bear that in mind. If you're still trading at 4 p.m., then uh, you'll know your P&L is in the red, that's for sure. Be focused, relaxed. It's very simple. It's a binary event. If this comes out much stronger than expected, above 250, 0.2 or 0.3% on the average hourly earnings, sell euro dollar, sell T-notes. If then stocks do start to fall dramatically because of the new rate hiking cycle, get out of your T-notes, but don't necessarily get out of your euro dollar. Okay, guys, just another news on oil. Uh, there's been more fallout uh, in, in OPEC with the discussions with uh, Putin. Uh, Putin now pushing for an oil freeze deal with OPEC, even with an exemption of Iran. Um, that looks like it's not going ahead, however, so there's more uh, uncoherent noises coming out of OPEC and oil as a result remaining on the back foot, really. Look at oil over the last few days. From $50 down to $43, and it looks like it's going to be heading in, in that direction. If this data comes out much stronger than expected, the stronger US dollar will also weigh on oil, so bear that in mind. Okay, guys, that's it for the market briefing. Um, I'll be giving a full uh, rundown of non-farm payrolls. It'll actually probably be Piers uh, about 1 o'clock uh, in preview of the data. It's going to be a big one, probably going to be the biggest one of this year, given that it's a binary event and that Janet Yellen has really set expectations so high. So good luck. Have a good session. I look forward to speaking to you in the room, and happy non-farm Friday. One thing to point out just before I finish is that Anthony Chung is not here today. Um, he's uh, had the goal to, to, to take a holiday, um, which means that we all stand a much greater chance on the non-farm payrolls <laughs> competition. So a, uh, there is a cup. Give it to me. So I'd like to see out of you guys, who is it can take this cup? Um, pound in a pot, closest guest to the number wins. Well done. It will be engraved and you will have your name forever remembered. So good luck. Non-farm payrolls Friday. Happy days. Have a good session, guys. Bye-bye.